Uh, today we'll talk about uh, carbon and uh, carbon fibers, graphite, so these are our products. Um, and uh, of course about modeling and simulation um, and especially in COMSA. So uh, Richard showed uh, two days ago a very nice uh, brief history of COMSO. So I show also um, how our company started. So it started actually in 1878 and it was part of Siemens at that time. And the first thing they did uh, were to produce compressed charcoal. And in 1920 was founded our largest plant, uh, the plant where I come from, in Meitingen. So it's uh, next year will be exactly 100 years. For us from uh, modeling and simulation, I think this milestone is also very important. This is the, our first multi-physics simulation uh, code, which was written by my first supervisor in 1984. And at that time, uh, we could simulate uh, in 1D uh, dual heating with thermal stresses. So uh, I'll tell you now a few words about where are we now, uh, where are our products used. I think for one company, it's uh, important that uh, it's somehow involved in this mega trends that uh, the, the, the whole uh, society is following. And one of them would be certainly renewable energy. It's not obvious here why carbon has something to do with it, perhaps. But um, on a, with solar panels, when you think about solar panels, they are made of silicon. And for silicon, uh, you need a lot of graphite and carbon uh, materials. Uh, for uh, wind power turbines, uh, uh, the, the largest wind power turbines are made of carbon fibers. So, um, and um, which is driving the, 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 the maximum power that they can generate. Uh, the next trend would be the digitalization. So semiconductor industries, LEDs, um, these are uh, typically um, um, so materials like silicon carbide, like uh, gallium nitride. So they are made also in uh, um, graphite reactors. So for the epitaxy, you need graphite uh, coated, sil uh, 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 silicon carbon coated uh, graphite uh, to produce them. Uh, for the mobility, uh, we have uh, cars like BMW or many upper class uh, cars that have carbon fibers either in pillars or uh, in uh, chassis or in uh, 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 brake discs. Um, and for airplanes, it's also obvious that the lighter they are, the, the less energy they need. And in the future, it, uh, it's, uh, it applies the same because for lithium ion battery, we saw just now in, in a previous presentation uh, how the market is growing for electric vehicles and for the anode, you need graphite. The same applies, uh, by the way, also for the fuel cells because there we have also our materials for uh, gas diffusion layer. Um, and also, sorry for the, uh, I think some people here from Lausanne, uh, this is uh, the team from TU Munich but I think you also use carbon fibers for your hyperloops. So I think this is also part of the, of the future applications where we also have our material. So I can conclude, I mean, these, are, these were the mega trends, but there are many other applications uh, where we use um, our materials and where the graphite and uh, carbon fibers especially are needed. So there's a large contribution um, to the modern world. So uh, I think you are more curious about the role of modeling and simulation and, and, uh, and what are we doing. And, um, and actually, um, we, uh, we are trying to simulate the entire value chain, the, the whole uh, production process. We have several pr uh, process steps, um, independent of what material do we produce, and also, of course, their application, what is important, what's relevant for these materials to satisfy. And we work also, um, Actually, since a year or two, we do all sorts uh, such simulations also for our partners who work with us. Um, <clears throat> so I show you a few examples from the production, application, and material development. And there will be 3D, 2D, 1D. So uh, I try also to go <laughs> uh, also to the to, to the lower scale. Um, so regarding production, 
So this would be a classical route uh, um, of the production of the synthetic graphite, where you have some raw materials that you mix, and uh, then you have some green forming, similar like in ceramic industry. Uh, you have some, uh, and you have two, two high temperature processes. Uh, first we call baking, and it's typically above 600, sometimes 1,000 Celsius. And the other one is graphitization. Uh, this is uh, uh, heating uh, by, by current, and it goes up to uh, 3,000 Celsius. And as you see, many of these processes uh, are simulated in, in, in our company. So I just uh, tell a few words about the graphitization. So uh, graphitization, uh, uh, for the graphitization you have typically very long furnaces where you can pack a lot of material. Um, and they are covered by, by, by insulating material, which is typically some uh, coke uh, bed. Uh, and it protects the material uh, from oxidation and also uh, it's a thermal insulator. So you, you uh, let the current flow through the material and it heats the material. And typically we have a lot of experience with that. So we have some, some we call them firing curve, which is nothing else but power versus time. Um, but we have also some constraints, and these constraints are coming very often from the transformer. Transformers uh, are limited. They have uh, limits in, in power, in voltage, maximum, minimum, and, and also maximum current. And the material becomes, so the material that you put in is amorphous and it becomes crystalline. So the properties change quite a bit. Um, it um, can be tenfold. Um, so this is, um, I just show an example how this may looks like, uh, the, the, the process optimization and the regulation. So actually the blue line is something what we maybe have, what we'd like to stick to. Uh, and at the same time we have, uh, we have some constraints in this picture are visible. The second one would be the, the current and the third one is the stress criterion, which is in our case based on principal stresses. And uh, so when you, when you try to drive the process based on power, at some point, um, depending on the material, because this depends a lot on the, on the raw materials that, we, that you put inside and the, process, uh, the processes uh, that, that uh, are prior to this process, you may get such kind of behavior uh, which is related to, uh, to uh, thermal expansion of the material. So it can go up and down. And finally, you, you can reach some stress criterion. And we try to do this regulation in COMSL to, to stick to the, to the uh, to this stress criterion. And uh, finally, when, um, when we are behind, uh, we, can, we try to increase the power, which is now at, uh, the point uh, number two. So we try to increase the power, but we figure out here, so this is this part, uh, we figure out that at some point we achieve the maximum current. So this, this is constraint given by the transformer. So the, the, the software it, itself then gives us the new power that we can achieve. So this is uh, in comes of based on events. Um, and, um, and, and finally, actually, we get this power. And this can be, of course, critical for us because these products have to go up to 3,000 Celsius. And if we don't have enough power, it's, it's a big problem because we would have to repeat the process uh, the way we put less material inside. And uh, this would not be good. Okay, so I show you a few examples from the application. Um, so what we also do, we, we bought some years ago the uh, Comso server uh, because uh, typically our technical sales was interested in such apps. We showed them how the apps may look like, so they were interested. In this case, you see the simplified, um, actually, um, so-called Chokhrowski process. Uh, which we took actually one, one point at a time. Um, and uh, what I mentioned that you need a lot of uh, graphite to make, uh, to make silicon. So in this case, uh, graphite and carbon. So in this case, all this green, yellow, and all this violet would be graphite. This is silicon, and this is a quartz. So it's quite a, quite a large amount of, of our products uh, that, uh, that they consume uh, making such, such products. Uh, in this case, well, What's important for them is to change the geometry to see how this uh, affects the power of the, of the, of the heater 
and how it affects the insulation of, of our felts, which is now in, in uh, green-yellow. The next one is TD, uh, 1D example, but it's very commonly used. I wrote here, what is simple for you may not be simple for everyone. This, I think we all started with such, actually, models. Uh, this 1D thermal uh, heat, uh, heat transfer, uh, but they use it quite a lot because very often they get from customer just, well, I have the temperature inside and what's the temperature outside. And they try to assemble, since we have uh, several of these materials that, that they assemble and they have different um, insulation properties, though all um, temperature dependent, so it's non-linear problem. Um, so they, they then assemble these materials and see, um, see what, what, is the, what is the result and what should they use within this allowed uh, thickness. Uh, so the next one is about silicon melting. It's not made as an app. So um, we figure out actually that our technical sales and, and, and um, lab people, they prefer to have results within one minute or two. So everything that lasts uh, too long is, uh, is not uh, something they want to have. And this is certainly not, not, not the case with this model. So what, what you see here is a fusion enthalpy for different uh, uh, elements. So, and on the first place, so um, it would be would be a carbon actually, and carbon is the most difficult to melt. But the carbon does not melt at um, atmosphere pressure. And uh, the second one is uh, silicon, and that's what we um, uh, what we uh, where we sell our materials. So, and why so difficult? So first, um, yeah, the silicon itself is semiconductor, so its, um, it's conductivity depends more on impurities. Uh, it's not very conductive. Then we have uh, change when it melts, it goes to metallic silicon, which is conductive. Uh, then we have, typically for this melting process, we have um, uh, some step functions for, for various properties. Um, and, uh, and also, it's packed in chucks. So this means you have a lot of space between, so, and so you have a lot of sagging. And sagging depends on, on melting. And uh, so the conversion is not, not brilliant, uh, but it's possible to calculate in 2D. And here is, a, let's say, one, one, one case where we actually tested a lot of physics. Um, so first it's uh, inductively heated. The coupling is first in carbon, then in silicon, because silicon after melting becomes more conductive than carbon, or graphite. Um, we have there actually our material is graphite, and uh, so we are mostly interested about it and its performance. On the upper part we have, uh, we have the inert gas, so, so uh, that um, means we have some radiation. Uh, moving mesh that depends on a, on a obviously on melting. And finally, we have, um, we have some, we calculate the stress in carbon during, during this melting, and, and also the silicon carbide forms on the, on the surface. And this is, uh, I would say, a lot of physics, but on the other side, it's only part of the physics that actually uh, happen in the material. But what we can calculate with that, uh, we try to uh, investigate uh, properties of the material, so in design of the material, a design of our crucible, shall we change something? Um, then uh, the influence of the ramp up phase, so how the customer, uh, how fast they, they, they increase the power. Um, then uh, influence of the loading quantity, because this sagging we have obviously, so we have different kind of couplings in the, in the material. Um, the, Insulation is certainly always in thermal stress. You have some, some um, um, it, it, there is some, some importance uh, in the insulation, how, how well insulated, how homogeneous temperature profile. And certainly we have silicon uh, infiltration depth. And there's the process of melting, so this is how it looks like basically with a, with a very large sagging. And uh, the next picture is for us, uh, I would say, more important. We see here, the numbers are relative, but um, I think it, for, this, for the presentation is, is, is uh, sufficient. 
So uh, we see that uh, the, how the stress changes in the material. This is for one silicon carbide thickness. Um, and uh, we may see also that this, since this is a cyclic process, not one application that the crucible is reused. Uh, we see that uh, this may um, uh, be quite a bit changed if we have, uh, if we have this maximum stress, if we have deeper or if we have thicker layer of silicon carbide. And, uh, and obviously, we have to care about, about uh, permeability of our material, which is actually introduction for the next step, material development. Um, I just go back maybe to yeah, some, um, let's say, frequent uh, phenomena, not, not, not appearing always, but it's frequent, it's common for some materials. Uh, that you see if you try to press the liquid uh, melt, so the, 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 the molten metal, through the, through the graphite, you would see sometimes uh, such kind of pictures. So what you see here is that it's very inhomogeneous. You have, so here is a melt, okay? So on this side, there is no infiltration. This side, it's, it's, uh, it comes to the end, and every, everywhere is actually different. So the material is not always so homogeneous. Um, and um, yeah, to investigate the influence of pores, I took a, a Homsel model, which is uh, actually a library. And you have here system uh, uh, water, air with uh, glass wall, static wetting angle, no gravity. And took the capillaries with variable rad radius between 100 and 300 micrometer. Uh, and yeah, so if you take a look on these, so these, these uh, um, are actually kind of, um, yeah, the, the, the time is scaled anyway, so, so the boat should appear um, as, as it would look like in reality. So, and you see that the infiltration in the left hand capillary is, is much faster than in the right hand capillary. Um, and uh, if you do that, this also with flat capillaries, which are 100 and 300 micrometer, you get such pictures. So, and you see uh, here, it's uh, the easiest is to infiltrate large capillaries, 300 micrometer capillaries. The second one would be 100 micrometer capillaries, but these capillaries are within 100. So the, here is 100 and here's 300. So they are not between, they are actually behind. And this, this is because of the surface, because this gives additional friction. Uh, and this is what, what we can conclude here, that uh, if the pore radius uh, increases, the capillary filling speed increases. If the pore surface increases, the capillary filling speed decreases. And we can play now with these images, which are now coming from, from CT scans here, shown only one, uh, but there are several hundred or thousands such of such images uh, to the thickness. And we can manipulate now the, yeah, the structure. So these two, two structures are kind of very close relatives. They have uh, basically the same porosity. The right-hand side is generated from the left-hand side, but they are different. And, uh, and this is, uh, uh, the question is now how the microstructure changes affect the, the properties. And uh, well, you can investigate that. Uh, in this case, uh, these structures um, yeah, generate, these are one of the first that I generate, so they don't have the same porosity, but the effect is still uh, observable also here. So if you compare the A is original one and B is the, the modified one. Um, and uh, so it's always relative. So it's always B to A. Uh, and uh, we see immediately that the specific surface area of B is, is smaller and it's 20% smaller. But it has relatively, again, 16% more uh, porosity. And we see that the properties, if you do now the simulation, such kind of systems, we can see that the properties um, are changed. And uh, some of them, not so much. So the thermal conductivity, in this case, is very little affected. Stiffness, much more. But we see that the permeability is uh, very much affected. And um, so, and, and, and this, uh, uh, actually was, was a beginning for us to start uh, analyzing deeper the, the pores and, uh, and that's actually what we 
what's the current project, so we try to analyze the materials and classify them uh, based on their pores. Okay, this was the last slide. Thank you.